So today is a very, very exciting day. We're running the opening reception of the User Interface Software and Technology Conference here at the Hasselblad Institute. For me, this means that I have a chance to bring 500 of my closest friends and research partners to work with me. We have the chance of showing, I think, something like 35 different projects that document what we've been doing over the past several years. Displays for blind users are typically good at one thing, which is text. But this starts to fail when you actually have something spatial, like an actual map or a video game that's in a spatial environment. Now this project right here is Dual Panto. With Dual Panto, you have one hand on a handle that you then control. The other hand represents something that moves in the environment. So in a video game, for example, it might be the opponent, and you might be represented as the top handle. So you can dodge shots, you can chase, you have a real-time, continuous spatial experience. What we're working on is materials that can at the same time be mechanisms. So we actually have this structure here and this structure is designed to allow this hinging behavior that you have like in regular pliers. But you can print the whole thing with that mechanism in one piece. When a student is starting at my group here at Hasselblad Institute, the mission statement I give them is I say, what do we need to do today that will sound fresh and exciting and plausible in five years? As a creator of virtual reality experience, you need to make a decision at some point. How much tracking space am I designing for? CNOGAF lets creators define experiences for arbitrary tracking volumes, for small tracking volumes or for big tracking volumes. It takes the narration of structure and maps it onto any space available. Human action is about how we can use human instead of machine to provide haptic feedback to the user. They have like two users, they are in their own virtual world and they are actually provide haptic feedback to each other. So the system tell the fishing player first pick up the fishing rod. On the same time, the other side, the kiting player, can pick up the kite handle. The main challenge actually is how to synchronize these two users. I think a good way of making people think about an ethical question is rather than like trying to play it down, you play it up. You make it bigger. So we made an installation that took all control away from humans and put them completely under control of the device. The moment the device is closed, it starts injecting electricity into your arm and that electricity forces your hand to produce this kind of cranking movement. And that's operating a generator. So you're actually producing electricity and that's what allows the device to live for that matter. And that became a good vehicle for us to actually debate the question of what it means to have systems that control humans.